Why can't we just drag it in? Casters and gravel don't mix. Well, all you gotta do is put a strap around it. Caster and gravel don't mix. Yeah, but we have a forklift. <laughs> Dave's double. No cheese. Still Dave's double. Dave double, no cheese. Why no cheese? Because it's bad for you? Not that the rest of it also, <laughs> <laughs> also That's isn't where bad. I was going. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the FDF channel. Today we have the start of the build series for the Corvette. This is going to be thrown in with our first video that we do. Um, but in this one, there's a new update that we have um, about the whole hoist area at Kyle's gonna tell us about. Hey, so we spruced up the area, we painted the, the wall and the floor gray. Um, we used some floor epoxy so it's really strong and sturdy and it looks great. We have some plans for some sponsored stickers going on the wall, like a, a big banner going along the wall. So Jack has the stickers in line, they're coming in about a week. We'll get those on the wall, it'll look great. But now, we are working on the Corvette. And our first task at hand is to remove more of the body panels. Uh, we're gonna take off the hood, the doors, the trunk, um, quarters, and the rear bumper. It's uh, gonna be a bare shell, as bare as they come. Then we're gonna start on the cage after that, and after, might get into more, some more fabrication goodies like firewall, lock off plates, uh, rear firewall for the rear radiator, we might cut some fiberglass out. We got a lot planned for this car, so stay tuned. I think we have to take the rear bumper off first before we take off the quarter panels. That's what I'm working on right now. Dude, where did that come from? Hey, yo. <laughs> what a KSC cup in there. It's still attached. Well, I said, Kyle, I said, Kyle, don't look at the camera. Just take it off. Go stick off. <laughs> Act natural. <laughs> That's fine. It's all part of it. cylinder bias bar setup so we got this OEM brake booster here and uh, it came with this rod sticking out so I cut it off and uh, it doesn't go through it's where the master cylinder bolts up yeah cut the rod off we're gonna put it through this hole it's gonna connect to the pedal the brake pedal in there and then we're gonna extend it and have it a bias bar and a dual master cylinder setup so just one step in the process What's up, Jack? How you doing, man? I'm scanning our OEM fuel sending unit. Uh, the reason is because we're gonna see if we can work with Nuke Performance on a couple things and offer them the CAD files for this so that Nuke Performance can make a drop-in sending unit for the C6 Corvette, which is gonna open up a lot of you know, opportunities in making the fueling system better for competition. So we'll send them the files. If they use it, fantastic. If they don't, we're still gonna run what they make, so. 
That's what it's all about, partnerships and working together with leveraging what each company has to offer. So I'm just about done I'm gathering a couple more points of reference and that's it. I'm just going to be doing a couple simple things. I'm putting a transmission tunnel cover where the reverse mount starter setup that I use is going to be. So basically, show you. I had to cut out this area of the tunnel because my starter sits approximately here. And I 3D scanned it oops, and made these plates. You can see they fit nice and around everything. And I have all of the other pieces that go here, here, a couple that are gonna screw to the floor. And over here, I'm actually threading the plate. So I've got the plate in my vise here and I'm just threading these holes. I water jet cut them to the drill size so it's nice and easy. And then I'm going to thread this plate as well because that plate is going to bolt to the floor. We can then go over to our handy dandy bolt bin where I have an assortment of hardware. We deal with fast on a lot. So I'm going to grab some M6 by 1 20 mil long bolts and that's what we're going to be threading in a cover plate. So you can see how this has a big hole in it. This has a big hole in it because I'm going to put an aluminum cover plate. So if I want to ever work on the starter, I don't necessarily need to go up and under the car. I can actually just take off that aluminum plate and I will have full access to it inside of the passenger compartment. So that's what I'm working on today. It's pretty simple. I'll tack it in place. I might also do the base plates for the roll cage because that's easy and I need to remove this entire fiberglass rear but before I do that I'm going to be 3d scanning the entire rear so that I can find all of the mounting points for the fenders and I can make a steel structure that's going to be in the exact same position as where the fiberglass was um, the easiest way to do that is to scan it while it's there so that I know exactly where it needs to be so when I design it on my computer I can recreate it and install it and I know the fenders are going to sit exactly where they should be there's a lot of cool things going on in the front. If you saw that, you might have to pause it, but give you a little taste. I just showed you something that's gonna be revolutionary for this Corvette. Uh, but really, uh, I really don't wanna show anyone fully until it's complete. So let's get to it and start fabricating this tunnel cover. I hit the wrong button, I'm such an idiot. Jack, what button is this? That is it. You can see the fitment's pretty good. Nice fit here, easy to weld, edge to edge joints here. This is alloy steel, just like the factory transmission tunnel. And then I did a lot of details. You can see this little cut here, relief for the metal. And then these holes are to go through the factory fiberglass floor. I'm gonna have to put a little piece of sheet metal here. This was just a little extra trimming when we were cutting it. But otherwise, this thing's ready to weld in already. And it is going to have that window, like I was saying, made from aluminum, so we'll be able to unbolt that and get access inside of the transmission tunnel and to all the components, electrical, starter, all that stuff. Um, I made it big enough, I think we might even be able to actually change the starter through the transmission tunnel. So a lot of thoughts being put into this car where five minute timeouts, serviceability, all of that stuff is the utmost importance because uh, I just have enough experience with stuff, knowing what I want to be dealing with and what I don't want to be dealing with. And we're going to put in the time now to save us time later. So one more look at it. And that is it. Looks pretty sweet. going to be ending this vlog with just some talk and discussion about the chassis. I have the starter box all done. You can see it's all nice and freshly welded in. Even this little gap here where there was a hole, I filled that in as well. 
Um, looks pretty good. A couple spots on the chassis where like the uh, paint or glue on the other side of the metal kind of interferes with the weld quality, but overall happy with the way it turned out. Discussion. I'm keeping the factory brake assembly because it's basically a really high-end pedal box. Um, it's this forged aluminum, cast aluminum block with the brake and the clutch assembly kind of built into it. It's all very lightweight. It's all very rigid. Um, the one thing that I will be doing is deleting this booster. I'm gonna be deleting this, obviously. And then we have designed a pedal box that has a bias bar and holds two master cylinders that simply bolts to this location. So we're gonna have two master cylinders inside of the engine bay with the bias bar for adjustment. Then we're gonna have a proportioning valve going to the rear of the car where we can decrease and increase the pressure to the rear brakes. And we are really gonna be able to dial in We'll have a mechanical bias with the bias bar so I can put up to 65-70% of the brake pressure to the front and then I can further adjust the pressure with a proportioning valve which I'll put inside of the car. That's how I'm going to distinguish further the brake bias if I feel it's needed. So I'll show you a CAD model of that because we do have that design. This probably will be a product that we release. All of the holes in the firewall that you see, we 3D scanned that. We made firewall block off plate kit we're going to be releasing that as well and then I made a firewall for the rear as well you can see it here this was the prototype we cut it out of a piece of scrap aluminum and it fits great so that's going to be another product the more we develop this car the more you guys are going to be able to buy things for it uh, that's the beauty of it so I've already designed like four things just in the last two weeks and it's going to be great for the community for the drifting for everything for this chassis um, we're really going to be able to dive into making this the best drift car that money can buy. Uh, because really, it is such a great chassis. Um, I've already got the transmission modded up, and it's going to fit a GSR with a reverse mount starter, and all I had to do was build that box. If you put a GSR with a reverse mount starter inside of a 240, get your grinder out, get your zip cut out, sawzalls, all, all that stuff, you'll be there for a while, making that tunnel fit all of that stuff. So already it's way easier. Love the chassis so far. Um, that's it for this one. And we'll see you guys on the next one where we start to dive into some cooler stuff like roll cage, starting point, base plates, all that fun stuff. See you in the next one.